week we started this series on God the Father. It was very interesting afterwards. The number of people who came up to me afterwards and uh, when we were talking about the fact that Father is not necessarily a positive thing for some people. The number of people who came up to me afterwards and said, I guess you know, must have met my father. There's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of pain out here caused by fathers. Intentional or not, it's still a pain that's been caused by fathers. And what we want to look at is we want to look at what our Heavenly Father is actually all about. What He is really like, not necessarily our earthly Father. So we looked at some things last week, let's see how many people remember this. One of the attributes, one of the qualities of the Heavenly Father was He was omnipotent. Who remembers what that means? Omnipotent, excellent. He remember, He knows everything. Omnipresent. He's everywhere, and he's omniscient. He knows everything. Excellent. Good, 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 good. All right. And we were talked about, just finished up last week, too, with the fact that our God is alive. All right? He is alive, and as a result, he does listen to you. And we looked at this slide here last week. Why would you do this? Why would you talk to a dead person? And that's what happens, is that, you know, some people talk, try to talk to dead people, it's ridiculous. Our God is alive. We can speak to Him. Now, the thing is, is that if He doesn't answer, it doesn't make much sense. So, in the Bible, God uses all kinds of methods to talk to you. He's used talking animals. He's used a flaming bush. He's used angels. He's used visions. And, quote, a still, small voice to speak to people. And God can use anything to communicate to a person, and this is really important, who is ready to hear and listen to what he says. You have to be ready to be able to listen to what he says. There's no sense this, you know, having him speak to you if you don't listen to what he says. There's a difference between hearing and listening. Listening is actually taking it in. Now, there are a few methods which God does, in fact, use to speak to us. Now, but you must remember this. This is a quote from a famous man by the name of Matthew Henry. None so deaf as those that will not hear. None so blind as those who will not see. So you have people who refuse to hear. They are capable of hearing, but they refuse to hear. They're capable of seeing, but they refuse to see. Now, God will often speak to you from another friend or a leader. This, this, this is really important. This, this, this is really the key to having God speak to you. Often, we, own, we need only a situation from another set of eyes to hear God's will. A good friend whom you trust as a committed and consistent Christian follower can bring God's voice to you. Now, I'll just, I'll just hold it here because I think we're interrupting somebody. What happens is you, you sit there and you think, okay, I've got something I want. I want to live with my girlfriend. So I'm going to pray to God about this. Now what do you think God's going to say? Well, okay, marry her first, but even before that, I want to live with my girlfriend. What's God going to say? No. You go to a friend of yours and you say, what do you think? Do you think it's a good
good idea if I, if I you know, live in, and my girlfriend moves in with me? So your friend says, well, do you love each other? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, then, I think that's a good idea. I'll lay money on the table. I'm not supposed to. But that is not coming from a consistent Christian follower. You want to take advice from a non-Christian, you're going to get non-Christian results. So when your bestest friend gives you this advice and says, Oh, yes, the two of you should move in together. And everything goes to pot a few years down the road. And the boyfriend starts beating up on you and this type of thing. Remember, it wasn't God's advice. It was a non-Christian friend's voice. So a Christian friend, God will speak through them. But sometimes you will not like what you hear. And that's the problem, is sometimes you have to listen and take it to heart what God wants you to do. Now, the Bible also has examples of most of life's problems and pitfalls and priorities printed through its pages. These are words from God. Okay, The book has words from God, so if you read the book, it will often give you advice for a specific situation. Look how something turned out for somebody else in a similar situation. Now that's God. If God was sitting here right on a stool, and you came up and asked him something, you'd have to be pretty dumb not to take his advice. And that's the book, though. The book is his advice. It tells you the wisdom he has given because he doesn't want to see us hurt. He loves us. And because he loves us, he does not want to see that pain. Sometimes, though, we get pig-headed and stubborn and we don't want to listen because we think we know better than God. Uh, there's something wrong with that logic. You know better than God? I don't think so. Sometimes we forget that this is a life instruction manual. You have to read it carefully. It contains necessary operating instructions. And there's warnings from the manufacturer. You know, <laughs> this gets me sometimes. Like, they've gotten to the point now with instructions that they're writing instructions for morons where you get a brand new food processor and it says, do not place hand in moving food processor. Now, that should be obvious, but it's the same thing here. The manufacturer, God, gives you warnings. It's probably not a good idea to do this, but we decide to go ahead and do it. And sometimes it's life-threatening, Sometimes it's personal relationships and this type of thing. Before you make a big decision in life, if you commit it to prayer, it will turn out a lot better than if you do it yourself. We go back to the situation, should I have my girlfriend move in with me? You know, when that ends up getting to be no good, are we surprised? No. Now, the Bible also describes God speaking in a still, small voice. God often speaks directly into your mind. And if, if you set aside time to pray and wait for his answer. God promises that he will answer you if you will pray and wait. His still small voice can be a thought in your mind, a clear and simple response to your prayers. But you have to listen. And it might not be what you want to hear. 
Sometimes we go through the steps. I want to spend money on such and such a thing. God comes back and he tells you, nope. Well, I still go ahead and do it. Well, why did you pray in the first place? Are you hoping that he's going to agree with you? The chances of that happening are very slim. Unless he wants you to do that. And sometimes we can actually hear God. From the Bible, in John 10, 27, it states, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So the bottom line is, God does communicate in many, many ways. Through a trusted Christian friend, through the words of the Bible, through thoughts that come into your mind during prayer, and sometimes just a voice. What were you thinking? Okay, sometimes he's that blatant. He'll come out and he'll tell you that. Sometimes, you know, he has to use, in some cases, a spiritual two-by-four to get our attention. Because we do, we ignore good common sense. However, no matter how God communicates with us, we will always need to be cautious. Very important that it's Him speaking. This is why we need to read the Bible, and because it will, He will not tell us something contrary to His spoken word. We go back to the friend, your best friend for 25 years. Should I have my girlfriend move in with me? Sure, great, you love each other, do it. Do you think that that is God speaking through her? Well, it's easy. It's easy to verify. Very easy. Because concerning God, Hebrews 6.18, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. All right? Just impossible. If we take a look through the Bible, his word in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, it tells us all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible will not lie because it's the word of God and God cannot lie. It's simple. It's right there. And you can always check if it's something that is coming from God. So if I'm sitting here as your pastor, and Charmaine has asked me this question, can I move in with my boyfriend? And I say, Charmaine, be blessed. Go forth and shack up. Is that coming from God? Even though it's coming from a pastor. And this is what happens sometimes. Pastors, like you've, you've seen this in the news, where pastors go off the track and sin. Okay, it happens. They're human. If you verify it with this, you'll see very simply. So Charmaine knows, no, Pastor David's lying through his teeth. Because what he just said contradicts the Bible. It contradicts God. Therefore, it's not coming from him. It's coming from the enemy. Very simple. Just these two things together will keep you on the straight and narrow. So, wouldn't you like to be able to talk to God and have him answer? Those of you who have been Christians for a while know that this is possible. It happens all the time. For others of you who aren't Christians or thinking about becoming Christians, it's like, <laughs> I'm not sure about this talking to God thing. Until you do it, you don't 
know what you're experiencing and what you're missing. So you cannot do it. It's like the little kid. I don't like that. Well, you've never eaten that. I don't like it. Well, how do you know you don't like it? I just know I don't like it. <laughs> well, try it. I'm like, no, I don't like it. It's the same kind of childish, immature behavior. I don't want to talk to God. He won't talk to me. If you're trying it, I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to do it. Try it. Being able to communicate with God is really amazing, but God is also our friend. Talking to God, picking up the spiritual phone, is a pretty incredible thing just right there. But in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. There is no sacrifice in life greater than a friend laying down their life for you. And that is exactly what Jesus did for you. He died for you. He is your friend. And it's interesting because the term friend it's so stupid nowadays. On Facebook, I've got 9,746,000 friends. Are you that desperate? Those aren't friends. Why do they even call them friends? Even if we get out of Facebook, we say, how popular are you? Oh, I'm very popular. I've got 47 friends. Oh, come on, guys. Get struck. A friend is somebody who will never betray you, who will never leave you, who will always be there for you regardless. Regardless of what you do. Jesus is the only one that's going to do that. Okay? So when you go out and you mess around with your best friend's husband, all of a sudden, your best friend is your best friend. Okay? What happened to this BFF? Okay? It's foolish. The only friend that you have forever and you can be guaranteed of it is Jesus because he forgives you. Okay? You messed up. Try it again. Let's go. Now, God as a friend is awesome in itself, but one of the truly, truly insightful words to describe God is Abba. This is a really interesting word in the Bible, because when you go to try to translate this thing, it does not translate exactly. It's a very unique word that has a meaning unto itself. And the closest translation we can get to Abba is Daddy, which is really an affectionate term. And we see it used here in Galatians 4, 6. Because you are his sons, because you are his children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So when you stop and think about this, to think that God can be your father, but you can actually have that personal relationship with him, you can actually say, Daddy, I'd like to talk to you. And that's not being disrespectful. That is simply the relationship that you are allowed to have with him, which is really, really incredible. Now, for next week, God wants us to know that he is there. And this, I think some of you will find this really quite interesting. God wants us to know that he is there with us in our life, and sometimes he does things to make us remember and realize that. We're going to look at some examples next week, because some people get this, this crazy idea 
that God is going to go through your life taking you out of all the crazy, idiotic situations you've got yourself into. That's not love. And we're going to take a look at some examples from the Bible, and we're going to look at some practical, hands-on, real-life examples that you could probably identify with. So it's not that God sits back and says, <laughs> I want to see them suffer. He's doing it for a reason. Okay? So, that will be next week. So let me just pray.